Hi there, and welcome to this video where I'm going to go through some tips for beginners playing the long dark in survival mode. I've played this game for quite a long time on and off, and I have about 466 hours in the game so far, mostly in survival mode. First of all, I'm just going to go through some of the key bindings. This is PC specific. The most common one that I use is the spacebar. This opens up your radial menu. From here you can access various actions such as eating food, drinking and starting a fire among a few others. To open up your backpack or your inventory, press I. In your inventory you can go through the various tabs of your backpack and you can also at the top view the other menus such as your clothing, condition, journal and crafting menus. If you quickly want to go to one of these menus individually, C will open your clothing tab, F will open your condition or status tab, J will open up your journal, and as well, in addition to this, if you press tab on the keyboard, you'll see the time of day show up in the upper right corner, as well as your general stats. And not to forget that, of course, M will be for your map. A note on saving in the game, you can't save whenever you like. The game has specific moments when it will auto-save. This is, for example, after you've slept or passed time, when you've entered or exited a loaded building, and by loaded I mean that you have a loading screen in between. There are some shelters which you can open the door and go into, and there won't be a loading screen, and that doesn't apply here. Another time you might see the saving icon come up is when you've been attacked by a wolf or a bear, for example. This is because I think it, the idea is to prevent people from loading a save when they just got attacked by a wolf or a bear. So therefore, you might see a saving icon come up after you've been attacked. So, with those basics out of the way, let's move on to tip number one. When you start a new game in survival mode, you'll be asked to choose a difficulty level and a region to start in. In terms of difficulty level, I would recommend the Voyager. This is because it's quite a balanced start and it's good for new players. For the region, I would recommend Mountain Town. The reason I would say this is because it has a lot of resources, a lot of shelters, and it's relatively small compared to some of the other regions. I definitely think it's a good place for a beginner to start out their journey. You can see that you also have the option to select random, but I really do not recommend this as a new player because you can be put in any of the regions, in any of the spawn locations, and this could be some of the hardest and toughest regions to survive in. And just to add to that, Mountain Town does connect to the region Mystery Lake, and Mystery Lake would be probably my second option as a place to start. So you have a good two regions to explore and while you're getting used to the game. Tip number two, warming up quickly. Once you've started a fire, an easy way to warm up quickly is to boil water, cook food, or even repair or harvest something. This will make your temperature go up quite quickly. Just remember that obviously this doesn't apply if your fire is created in a windy location, which will cause the fire to go out, or to, or you might not even be able to start it in the first place. But for example, if you're in a cave, or you're in a shelter, or you have an indoor fire, Doing something like cooking, boiling water, or some activity like repairing will make your uh, temperature meter go up quite quickly. So instead of just staring at your fire hoping to warm up, boil some water, cook some food, or repair something. Tip number three. You're likely to come across cars quite often during your exploration around the regions of the Long Dark. Or I should say Great Bear, because that's the name for the entire area. You can sleep in cars, but it is definitely essential to make sure that you use your bedroll when doing so. It is a little bit confusing, as you can see in the clip. To demonstrate, I've put my bedroll in the glove box temporarily. If I, on my radio menu, now try to select rest, you'll see that it will just say rest, and if you do so, you can sleep. However, this will not be, of course, with your sleeping bag. But, of course, the icon for the sleeping bag still shows up, which is a little bit confusing. When I put my sleeping bag back into my inventory and go back to the same menu, it shows the same thing. However, you can also listen out for the zipping noise which comes up when you do actually use your bedroll. So this will let you know that you're actually in your sleeping bag rather than not. Overall, just be cautious when sleeping in a car, because even with your bed roll in use, it may still be that cold that you can still freeze. So it's just something to be aware of that you have to look out 
for the temperature around you and the weather conditions. Tip number four. I always try to keep my clothing as repaired as possible. You may notice that all items in the game come with a condition level and you find these items at varying condition levels when you pick them up in the game. The clothing you choose to wear in the game has a huge impact on your temperature and your resistance to wet and wind. You start off with some basic clothing, but as you explore, you're likely to find more items of clothing. Once you've kind of found your favorites that you love to wear, there's maybe particular items that you really like or think you have a good setup. With those, that's why it's really important to keep the condition up. If the condition reaches zero, the item will be considered ruined and you can't repair it anymore. In order to repair an item, you're going to need a sewing kit or a fishing line and the materials needed for that particular item. Most items require cloth, some require cured leather, and later on you can also craft specialized items which would require the hides from the specific animal related to that item. Note as well that when you're attacked by a wolf or a bear, you are likely to have the condition of your clothing go down through tears and damage. So make sure to check the condition of your clothing after an attack has occurred. Tip number five, don't climb when you're tired. In your journey, you'll come across climbing ropes. I would suggest not even attempting to climb a rope if your energy levels are anywhere below half. In fact, to be honest, I would suggest always, if you know you're gonna climb a rope, to make sure your energy levels, your food levels, and your water levels are all at pretty much maximum. Well, maybe not as much food and water, but definitely your energy levels for sure. When a rope is particularly long, there will be ledges where you can stop and rest in between your climb. Now in the game you have the ability to craft crampons. This helps when going up ropes and coming down. It also helps your grip on ice. However, mostly I use them pretty much only when I am going to climb up a rope. However, I wouldn't worry too much in the beginning about crafting crampons. It's probably not gonna be your first priority when you're just starting out in the survival mode. Tip number six. The well-fed bonus is really valuable. If you're lucky enough to be able to avoid starvation for 72 hours or three days, you'll get the well-fed bonus. This you can see in your status tab. This gives you a 5% buff to your condition as well as increasing your carrying capacity by five kilograms. As you collect more items in the game, you'll know that having more uh, carrying capacity becomes really, really important. Further along in the game, you'll also be able to increase that capacity by even more by crafting or finding a moose hide satchel and a technical backpack. However, that will definitely be further into your game than the beginning. Tip number seven. You will pretty much always wake up thirsty, especially if you slept for a lot of hours at a time. You're always gonna be thirsty when you wake up. So be sure to have enough water uh, boiled or other drinks available for when you wake up. And kind of related to this is tip number eight, which is I suggest to try sleep at night and explore during the day, which may sound really logical, but it's easy to get out of that routine if you become too exhausted during the day and you think, oh, I need to sleep to get my energy levels up. But trying to sleep overnight and especially for longer periods at once, so from 10 to 12 hours, it really is better for your condition. And as well, exploring at night is just a whole lot more risky. You have lower visibility, the weather can be more extreme, and even the wildlife has behaves a bit differently. Speaking of wildlife, tip number nine. If you are exploring at night or even during the day, Take extra care when you're going over hilly parts where your visibility in front of you is quite short. I've had many times where I've had surprise encounters with wolves and especially at night because as I mentioned they behave a little bit differently at night. During the day you'll be able to tell if a wolf is nearby because you'll probably hear howling and if they've spotted you they're likely to bark at you. At night however they don't really do this. That's why it's especially scary when you come over a hill and suddenly there's a wolf in your face. <laughs> Tip number 10. Harvesting a carcass. When you've made a kill for yourself, it's really best to harvest the carcass as soon as possible. Over time the, car the carcass will freeze and therefore the time it takes to harvest meat or hides from it will be longer. So it's really advisable to do it as soon as possible. 
If you've come across a carcass that's already frozen, then you can still harvest from it. Sometimes there's often still a bit of meat left on it, but I would really recommend to build a fire nearby so that you have some warmth while you're doing so, because your temperature tends to drop quite a lot, especially if the weather conditions are very cold and windy or whatever. As well, generally, your hunting knife is going to be the best tool that you can use to harvest a carcass. So, those were my 10 tips for beginners playing the long dark. I hope they're helpful to you. It was quite hard for me to decide which tips I should include, and I'm sure I could include many more, but this is a good starting point, I think. Feel free to leave me any questions that you might have, and good luck surviving in the long dark. Thanks for watching.